on now to a man, a legend in his own lifetime. He referred to by private eye as head of paper clips for the LDDC, but in truth he was director of administration. I want to get the title right. Director of administration, uh, Stuart Innes. Thank you all for coming. Uh, little did I realise when three or four months ago we started out on this venture that I would see quite so many old friends and many, oh, many oh. faces that it's a great pleasure to see you here tonight. And I wanted to say, first of all, and this wasn't scripted in, in the earliest version of this, a big thank you to those of my colleagues uh, who've made this evening possible. There's Howard, who we've just heard from, and his secretary, Rosie, and Dorothy, who runs this building. Uh, their help's been unstinting, and to them we're enormously grateful. And I'd like to thank Sue and David and Pat. Where's Pat? Lost him. He's hiding. There he is. Um, without them, uh, and the detailed work they've put into this evening, uh, none of this would have been possible. And so I'm really, really very, very grateful to them for all that they've put into making this evening the success it clearly is. It was all back in uh, summer of 1980. It was a sleepy afternoon in DOE where I then worked. And my, my phone rang, which is unusual on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> and an assistant secretary, my boss, whose name I've long forgotten, said, could you come and see me, please? So I did. And he said, when I walked in the door, they've appointed this madman to be chief executive of this new <laughs> urban development corporation. We've got him my for Docklands. He needs a pair of hands and we thought of you. I wasn't very sure what to make of this, but off I went on Monday morning and met the madman in an office in Blackfriars. And then he said to me, so you're the department's spy. <laughs> I said, no. I said, if they sent me to work for you, it's you I'll be working for. When can you start, he said. And so my very staid life as a civil servant was transformed and for the next 18 years I found myself on a roller coaster of roles within LDDC which came to an end two months after the corporation ceased to be operational. I set it up and I wound it up. Such an experience comes to an individual only rarely and it's an experience which from beginning to end I wouldn't have missed for the world. First, of course, there was Reg. He was with us until the end of 1987. In preparing for this evening, I had a letter from a former officer of the London Borough of Southwark. He can't be with us tonight, unfortunately. He said in the early days, um, in those early days, the London Borough of Southwark resolved that they weren't going to speak to the LDDC. Officers weren't allowed, members weren't allowed to speak to us at all. But we met in a pub somewhere deep in deepest Kent. And he said, I remember Reg, not only as someone with drive and vision, but also his patience and understanding of the difficulties faced by a relatively junior officer put in an awkward position by his political masters. His legacy to the built environment and the infection of colleagues is a great testament to the man. Well, hear, hear. That about says it all. He was a great guy, much loved by all who worked for him, not least by me kept in touch over the years and it was a huge pleasure to see him every time I saw him down in Broadwell Manor I saw Betty people were inspired with a sense of purpose and loyalty to the corporation and to Reg personally which flowed right through to the end with Eric here organisations need that sense of loyalty even at LDDC there are times when the exemplary leadership organisation needed was not there it was no easy thing to keep going when you're about to lose your job. But people did. I remember working happily right up to the moment I walked out of the door for the last time. I don't know anyone who regrets having worked at LDDC. Do any of you? 
I thought not. From start to finish, there was a, a recognition and a need, you know, to think big and to plan big, and the public investment up front. I don't think the LDA and the EP ever recognised in the way that Reg did the need for important infrastructure. Of course, Michael Hesseltine said it, poor Reg uh, fell foul of civil servants who, you know, he didn't ask for their permission to wipe his nose. And uh, that um, blacklisting, if I can put it that way, lasted until the day he died. And never, not once, in spite of many efforts, did they give him so much as an MBE? That, I think, is a national disgrace. <laughs> All of you can feel rightly proud of everything that's been achieved here. Your successors, their partnerships, they do a lot of talking. But remember, some, some of those sites in the Royals, they're just the same today as they were the LDDC left the scene in 1998. Frightening, I think. Thank you all for coming. I uh, am greatly gratified. There's one guy here who came all the way from Australia. And I really can't believe that that can be so. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's been a great pleasure to um, have you all here this evening. And thank you to my colleagues for making it possible. We're going to show you now a little bit of um, uh, a video that uh, Reg made back in those heady days when he was Chief Executive of the Corporation. And then I'm going to say a few words to the family. It's all there. A living monument. Docklands. A new city. A new business district. New and rebuilt communities. There were mistakes, there were struggles, but in the end they achieved that vision and won what they wanted. I suppose what we did, against all rationality, against all market and planning criteria, was actually to bring Docklands into the mainstream of London life. I don't think there's anything else like it anywhere. I've always had this itch to kind of cause things to happen. I knew it would work. It was simply a matter of keeping one's nerve. I think that the, the timetable was about right. We've, uh, we've, we've, we've done our job. It's up to them now. It's thriving. It's, the joint is jumping in every kind, kind of way. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very privileged tonight to have Reggie's extended family here tonight. Um, and Stuart is going to present the family uh, with a very special book. Sarah. This is Sarah, better known to Reg as Sally. Did you have to really say that? No, of course I did. We first met in 1980. I don't know sure whether you remember it, but I came down uh, to the barge driving race. Some of you will know about that. And there we were in the queue for the Natisha. We were going to sail up the river. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. Yeah. And here we are 30 years later to celebrate the life and times of a man who, you know, clearly has generated so much love and affection that it's really not true. Anyway, everyone here tonight, and if they haven't, they're going to sign this wonderful book, and we want you to have it as a memento of this evening and of a great, great guy who we all love and great affection for. So, thank you ever so much. I think poor Sally's going to have her husband say something in response to that, but uh, I hope you'll enjoy having the book. Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming tonight. It's such a pity that Reg couldn't quite make it for the 30th <laughs> anniversary of the Docklands. Um, he lived his whole life, I suppose, from the minute he saw a floating piece of rusty metal on the river to the abandoned docking buildings and things, he had a huge passion and it never, ever, ever died. Until his dying day, he was still redesigning the whole of London, moving Eastminster, Westminster to Eastminster, <laughs> to creating Venice in the river, and 
he absolutely adored this place more than anything. And I just want to thank you all for coming here tonight. And I'm usually criticised from um, not drawing breath between sentences and jumping sideways on lots of different tangents, which nobody really understands being connected to the original discussion. So perhaps you might recognise me as Rich's daughter. <laughs> um, I have to mention, just because it's my passion at the moment, is the regeneration of Penzance. I'm a Cornwall addict and a sea addict and a water addict. So my guides are up here from Cornwall, and um, if there are any huge developers who want to invest there, please do so. But other than that, Reg um, was my biggest love of my life, and I miss him a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you.